Are you a woman searching for purpose and success? A housewife? Maybe a single mother? You're in the right place. Welcome to Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles. Activate, motivate, inspire. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. I am Miss Lisa Nobles, your hostess, and I am so excited and elated to be with you today. Speaking of today, our subject consists of, of broken and abused, overcoming the trauma of domestic violence. I have a very important guest joining me for this empowerment segment at the Savvy Speaks Roundtable. This segment is dedicated to exploring facets of domestic violence, which paralyzes one to remain in an abusive relationship family. You are broken and abused, held up in a waiting room, anticipating the next doctor's prognosis. Yet once again, you go home with the person who put you there. So let's give a warm welcome because um, to my guest, uh, guest queen, Dr. M. Nicole Peters, who was also, we, we um, not only did we connect initially on uh, Facebook, but we have done several projects together. We were, we have co-authored a couple of books together. She has an amazing show that I will allow her to get, uh, let you know about that. She has been, she has been an advocate from, even for EWAP, she's given me reviews. She's always standing in the gap for her fellow her fellow sisters and, and brothers, of course. But we're going to give a warm welcome to my guest queen, Dr. M. Uh, M. Nicole Peters, professional certified life coach, international, <laughs> international motivational speaker. She's a publisher and a publicist, is <laughs> an author of the best-selling book, A Woman of Love, Power, and Respect as well as the number one best-selling book, Woman, Women Warriors Who Make It Rock, which is a, a book that I uh, was one of her co-authors in, Drowning in, Deep, in the Deep Mind, SEA and, and Breaking Barriers, which I will allow her to briefly tell you a little bit about that. She works with, her specialty is with oppressed women and youth to coach them about the power of self-love, purpose, natural healing, as well as well wellness. Welcome, Nicole, to the Savvy Speaks Roundtable. Family, our focus again today is learning about the impact of domestic violence by equip equipping you with tools that will help someone get out of an abusive uh, relationship. Nicole, thank you for coming in to the show. Please uh, share a little bit about yourself and we'll jump right in. Hello, 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 Lisa. <laughs> it is so great and fabulous to be here on your amazing and wonderful show. Let's Thank see how you. we're going to for today. Let's, let's make sure we rock it out and help yes. as many people that we can that is wounded and bound and distressed and depressed. Yes. And we have to get them away from violence. Violence is on the rise again, and it's up to us as leaders to make sure that we <laughs> tell them, no, you do not have to live in fear. No, you do not have to live being wounded. But you must live in love. And when self-love come and vibe, you get yourself out of the tragedy. You get yourself out from being hurt. And it's time to go heal. <laughs> come on. Let me tell you, if this is just a prelude to the awesomeness of the sister, and I know that we have been um, affiliated with one another for at least I think eight to ten years, at least five. Yes. I know I, I yes. know it's been more. But let me tell you, she comes with this type of uh, this type of awesomeness or empowerment every time she speaks. And let me tell you something. We are in we are in for an awesome, amazing show. So are you ready, family? Then let's talk about it. Broken and abused, overcoming the trauma of domestic violence. So Nicole, Dr. Nicole, how um how did domestic violence affect your life? Why don't we just start right there? Okay. Um as a young girl in high school, um, me and my boyfriend was actually living, like, everybody tell us, like, our classmates, I'm like, y'all living, like, adult life, because we, um, he was a newspaper guy, 
And um, I would get on the back of the motorbike with him and go help him deliver his newspapers. And me and him were like, um, we we're more like have a chef. You know how to push and start and all yes. and start. So I thought, you know, when you're younger, you think that's love, you know, because it started off with like a pushing and arguing and putting your head, tilt the head and everything. So I'm like, oh, he loved me because if he didn't, he wouldn't do it. So I thought that was okay. So when I did become a college student, adult, and I was able to, um, me and him had separated and got with someone else because of what I had tolerated then, I thought it was already it was okay to tolerate more. And right. I thought that God loved me. Um, I met someone, um, um, I met him in college. And he was my tutor. And then we end up talking and we end up having babies. But it started from there with him. But where the tragic really started from is that I experienced it with three different guys. My high school boyfriend, but it was just a little, little small little push and shove. I'm not going to say he just abused me. But that's where I let it start coming from as far as, you get what I'm saying, sis? Yes. As far as mm -hmm. um, letting it um, be preventable. I mean, I didn't stop it from being preventable. So then after my ex had went to jail, I got involved with another guy. And with this guy is, I loved him for his money. I did not love him because I loved him from the heart. So first of all, I was wrong. And you know, we as women got to face responsibility too. I was wrong because I thought, oh, he's going to take care of me. Come on now. I'm this, I'm, I'm, I'm the cold yeah. Peter from out, you know, Born and raised in poverty in Buckaloosa, Louisiana, small town, six three miles from New Orleans. I was yeah. born and raised in poverty. I had to get myself about a poverty. I was always told I was a product of my environment. So when you find someone you thousands of dollars every week, sis, in my situation, that's what a lot of them do. They go for the money, not thinking about the other things that go along, the other women that he has, the other stuff that I have to go through, not being able to turn across the bed and it's cold right there because he's talking about he's still out there doing his thing. So it was like I was attracted to the wrong type of men for some yeah. reason. And it, only God can pull you out of that because at any time when we start worshiping money, then we that is our it become our idol and that comes mammon. Mammon is anything you worship over God. And I promise you, I had set God aside and it was all about the moolah. So I tell people all the time, be careful when it's all about the, the moolah because it can come back and bite you. All money is not good money, sis. Yes. So I I had to go out there and I had to work with downtrodden women and I had to coach them the power of self-love and natural healing and wellness and start doing uh, retreats and events and you know of course and then I started being an author and then I became a publisher and I went and found women like you that had great stories women yeah. that uh, don't know you know like people know about Oprah don't get me wrong I love me some Michelle Obama I think her story is amazing but like Michelle Obama but Michelle Obama mom said said it best. Michelle is normal and Barack is still a normal person. What yeah. about all the other people that have stories out there that people don't know? So that's what I started doing. I started doing outreaching and finding women who can tell their story of they've been through the domestic violence and they was at rock bottom, but now they want to rock the world. So that, that is, is what awesome. I say, um, how I got into there. We supposed to have separated and we was in living in Texas at that time and I had said to him. Um, okay, you have, you leaving next week after we went to court. I said, so you can stay on one side of the house and I can stay on one side of the house. Right. But since I woke up one day, I mean, I was on the phone. He didn't know who I was on the phone with. And I was on the phone with my brother, Ash, and I was like, you know what? I can't wait till this is over and I'm going to come up there to Houston and just stay at your house. And I'm going to, um, you know, I just need a fresh breath of air. You know how your brother's talking to you like, yes, sister, get it over with. I never told my brothers how they, he was abusing me because I know they would have killed him. Come on, sis. I'm the come baby. On. 10 brothers. I have 17 brothers and sisters and I'm the baby on both sides. Could you wow. imagine what? happened to him so even though he was abusing me i was still trying to save his life in the process mm -hmm. i know what my big brothers would have done so when he didn't hear me tell my brother bye joe and i used to say bye joe and i didn't say it i just said bye and i see you later so when i turned over boom that's when he hit me so hard i felt like mm. my my brain was busting out. I didn't know what was going on. The heat was so devastating. So I was like kind of out of it. And he would just, he would constantly hit me. Oh, that's why you wanted me to leave. And you took me to court. Because, you know, in Texas, I wish there's one law that changed. Is that yeah. you and if y'all live in a house together, that um, one's supposed to leave for 24 hours to cool off, but they can come back in there. That is dangerous and can cause you your life. Because right. they're able to come back in there. So um, he was like, 
I'm going to kill you before you be with anybody else first. And he just jumped on me, locked me in a house for four days, told me that I would never be with nobody else. And he was going to beat the bat mm, out of me. And mm. he was gonna tell me where I would never look the same no more. I would never be a beautiful black chocolate woman no more. And just he just beat me for four days and tried to convince me that he loved me. Put witch hazel all over my eyes and everything. Kicked me in my ribs. It was the grace of God how I got away from him. It's a shame that a woman have to use her body. And me, that day I would fight for life. I had to use yes. my body and, and, and um, tell him, yeah, I love him. That's, that's, that's just make some great love. That was the most, <sighs> that was the most devastating love making there was. But I knew I had to get him vulnerable to where I can get away from him. And that way I was able to get the ice pick and I was able to stab him, get in my car barefooted, nothing hard on, but I had a shirt in the car and a pair of pants. I walked into the store and I was like crying. And the lady asked me what happened to me. And I was telling her what happened to me. I was like, please call my mom in Louisiana. I need her right now, please. And I was so weak. They was like, sit right here. The people in the store, I'll never forget it. They fed me. They gave me some fruit and everything. The lady went in the store, got me a pair of pants. I was barefooted. She put some socks on my feet and gave me the shoes off her feet. So it was, um, it was just a devastating moment, but I was able to get away after he had a gun to my head for four days. He was like, if you move, if you touch anything, I'm going to kill you. That's the type of situation. Wow. Nicole, I, let me tell you something. That was a powerful, powerful story. And I would love for you to do a part two just in case. But let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I know that so many women can relate to what you're saying because you're so passionate. And I'm sitting here remembering my own um, experience with experiences with a domestic violence. And one thing that you said was that it's incredibly relatable is how you got away. Just quickly elaborate. Go back right there to that moment. How were you feeling? What, what were you thinking? What was going through your mind after you, you know, subjected yourself to become intimate with this man just so you can get away? I think that God is leading us right there because so many women, there is studies do show that there is a small, small amount of men as well, but so many women can identify with that. Can you elaborate just a little bit more about how you feel at that moment? It was like that third night. And even when I went to go um, take a bath, because he was mm -hmm. trying to heal me, he um he like bought Epsom salt and different things like I had at the house. And he wouldn't even let me go use the bathroom by myself because he know that if I had any chance of getting away, if I could crawl out a window, anything, he know me. So he would just sit right by me. And I remember I had already started looking up the, um, different um, interviews, I mean, different videos of how to get away from domestic violence, all type of things. And I was one of them was the lady said, sometimes you got to play the nice woman like you love them so much until they can feel weakable for, I mean, be weak enough for you to um, assist yourself in trying to get away from the danger man if you can't call 911. So I know the next thing to a man's heart is what they want from the woman all the time. And it was like, Lord Jesus, how can I do this man to beat me? And now I got to convince, got to give him my body just for, I can just let him know, which he had already been trying to, to, to touch my body, even though he knew I was sore and what he was doing to me. And he would just constantly, constantly get on top of me without me telling him to. So I was like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say, let's just be a family again. I had just had my, um, my last daughter, and I was like, let's just be a, a family again. I called Momo and tell, because Momo knew after I had my baby that me and four of my friends was going on a cruise. So he had me with the gun to my head to call them and let them know that I was going on my cruise and that everything was okay and, and fine because they hadn't heard from me in days. And I'm, I'm from a family of strength. We, we made sure we talked to each other. So well, let me take you back to that night. I was mm -hmm. like, Lord, Jesus, just help me. I need you. I need you. And when I had to sit there and make love, I remember how it was. He was like, yes, we're going to be a family again. Cause they be just that delusional. And he was like, yes, we're going to be a family again. I can, I can still like some days I had to really fight for years. And it took me to write my book. And my book was so therapeutic for me because I was able to really get out on how this man touched me and how he did my body. And he was like, Oh yes, we're going to we better make another baby. He was thinking about making beat me down. And it's the fourth, third night going on fourth day, beat me down, but sitting up there talking about me and the inside of me talking about we finna make a baby and be a family again. And I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. And I was just like having a like, smile, cry, 
and still make love to him at the same time. And he was mm. like, I hope everyone got to cry. He thinking I'm crying because I'm mm. happy that we're getting back together. He's thinking I'm crying because we're about to be a family again. I'm crying because of the situation that I got to get myself out of and how I don't realize that you can be with somebody for so many years and don't know that they've got a mental problem. He really, it, it, and it goes all the way back to, to his the way he was jumping on me, it goes all the way back to him seeing his father beat his mother, and he seeing his grandfather beat his grandmother. Mm. So, um, yes, um, I found out so much more after that. But that night, um, he he ended up he was like at that night when we was making love, and he thought we was making love. I said I was making horror because I feel like I was in a horror horror movie, sis. I feel like mm-hmm. I was in a horror movie, and all of a sudden I'm getting raped in this horror movie, and mm. he was just. Like, and I'm a sore, and I'm hurting, and I can feel. And it's like every pound that he put on me, every pump that he took in me, it felt like my soul was just crunching, like shots mm. were really going down my body. Mm. And I was just mm. like, oh my God. And then when I got him weak enough, sis, I had already set it up to where when I was cleaning up the closet, I had found the ice pick in there. So mm-hmm. I had put the ice pick up under the pillow. He didn't know I hadn't put it up under the pillow. So when he was um, afterwards, I made sure and Lord, you know, everybody, everyone might have to do something one day. And I just made sure that I gave him my all to make him weak. And mm-hmm. then that's when I was able to stab him with the ice pick and get up out of there. And um, it was mm-hmm. so and I was I didn't I thought I hadn't killed him. I didn't know if I had not killed him or not. But my whole point was he was gonna try to kill me, so I need to get away. I didn't try to put on anything else what I had on. I left out the door in the car like it was and I only had maybe and he made sure there wasn't no gas in the car. So in case I did try to get in the car and leave. In our glove departments, we always kept a twenty dollar bill in there in case one of us have a um need some gas one day or don't have it and the kids might have need my older kids might have need to go somewhere. So he had already took that out of the car. So he yeah. already had plans to where, okay, I'm gonna get her either way it go. So when I did stop at that store and um the lady called, my mama sent the Western Union to me and they ended up coming to pick me up from the hospital, the local hospital there. But that was how I was able to get away. But when I tell you that haunted me for years of what he Mm -hmm. did to me was unbearable. It was days where I couldn't even sleep. It was days when I wouldn't even want to eat because he still had power over me. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, only thing I can do is go to God and ask for, I want to, how can I forgive him? It took me forever to forgive him because I don't think I could see is how I was going to get him back. Like right now, my side, sometimes when it rained, my side still ate so bad for me taking all those licks there. Mm. Right now, I suffer a cognitive decline because of how he hit me in the head with the gun. Right now, I had to learn how to talk like I couldn't talk like this. I would stutter all the time. And then sometimes when I write my words or something, sometimes be out. But I told God, I said, God, if you help me through this process, if you get me back to a sense of normalcy, I will help so many women that's going through this violence, that's going through things like this with men and feel like they, oh, oh, yeah, he got money. So I'm going to be there. Don't tell me. I know. My mama done told me plenty of times, Nicole, you can move back home. My sister never told me plenty of times, you can come stay with me. You don't have to be involved with somebody because he's too controlling. They knew he was controlling, but they didn't know the rest of the things I was going through. Okay, Nicole, you had, Dr. Nicole, you had uh, briefly, I want to back up just one second from your, because you are, you specialize in domestic violence. And a question that came to me as you were telling your story was how you articulated about your, your, your boyfriend at that time. He had saw his father um, abuse his mother. And then his father also saw his father abuse his mother. Can you give me briefly uh, no, your expert opinion on multi-generational domestic violence and how that affects our communities, please? Yes, no problem, sis. Um, I didn't have no idea he come from a, um, a downline of um, domestic violence. Yes. And when I finally did talk to his mother and ask, why can he go from being so lovable mm-hmm. to being so evil? Because it's like, mm-hmm. I, I, I knew something wasn't there. Like, how can this man be so lovable and then be so evil? So she said, it's finally time for me to sit down and talk to you. Yes. And I said, okay, let's talk. And I said, please tell me because I need to know. Because I know this man would love me on Monday and then want to fight on Tuesday. So please tell me more. So right. she explained 
that his father had jumped on her and he wa- she, he she he watched his mother get beat for years wow and, and not only that he has also saw his grandfather jump on his mother on his, on his grandmother so he thinking in his mind that that's what he's supposed to do to control women because yeah. it's what his father did to control women and that's what his grandfather did to control women so right. that right there is a generational curse within itself in him he, the, the dna is in him and the mindset is in him that okay when my woman don't do as i say i don't do how i want her to do then it's time for me to slap her it's time for me to hit her it's time for me to do something so i was like then with a tear coming down my eye when she was telling me and I, it, it, and it's so hurtful because he used to always say i didn't mean to do that to you i'm right. sorry i did that to you it's just something that you know i thought that was right and i used to ask him why would you think hit me would be right and he would never go into detail so when his mama opened that that that, that war womb up i knew then and i could have been getting him some help and seeing why he's doing things like this um maybe you know it wouldn't have got so far i could have walked away but i wasn't right. giving that opportunity because i didn't know so what i tell people all the time and find out about their family and the history because it can it can stop you from getting hurt or killed in the end sis and i agree with that one thousand percent and it, which would lead me into my next question is studies show that 20 that, that there are 20 people per minute who are abused physically by an intimate partner in the united states who yes. would like to contribute these astonishing facts what what are your opinion on how that's relatable, which would justify what what you just explained to us in, about concerning your 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 experience um, with domestic violence? So how would that impact the world? Just in knowing that studies have even validated that twenty people per minute are abused physically by an intimate partner. If you can if you can respond in one one to two minutes, that would be perfect. Well, I think the right now with COVID going on, it probably have went up to probably about ten minutes per 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 um per um partner relationship or marriage, mm-hmm. because they have been domestic violence in the last two months have been on the rise. Right, and I can relate to it because now people are stuck in a house with their abusers. They are in the house stuck with their abuser. Some women, you know, they quit their jobs because the abuser loves to for a woman not to work and have to depend on them. Mm-hmm. Because that's another weapon for them. Mm-hmm. And they know that that woman can't go up and leave and go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So what I feel about that number is it's time for Congress. It's time for our Senate, our House of Representatives, and all these judges to put a stiff arm on these men that are doing this to these women. And don't get me wrong, there are women that do domestic violence as well. Yes. Um, since I'm yes. an advocate in domestic violence, there are women that abuse their husbands as well and their boyfriends as well. But the but eighty five percent of it is from men, and mm-hmm. they think that they control the woman, not only her body, but her mindset, her heart, and her soul. Your man is not God. Your husband is not God. Don't get me wrong; they're your spouse, they're your king on the earth, but God is the only one that should control your mindset, your body, and your soul. Right. So I'm asking anybody. If they can help around here, write to your congressmen, write to your senators and your House of Representatives, and let's get something done. Because there's no way they should be 20 minutes, and there's no way it should be 10 minutes. There's no way it should be an hour. There's right. no way it should be two days of the type of violence that we see just right here in America alone. I'm not talking about all over the globe, because people in my organization, I have them from India, I have them from right. um, Dubai, I have them from all Iran, and they're really going through it. You think the American women going through it. The world women are really, really going through something. So this is why I say to you and I say to other people all the time, stop it. And the only way to stop it is that we have to use our voice and take it to Congress. And if anybody want to put a march together for domestic violence, you sense we need to put a march together for domestic violence. And let's get out there and let the government know we need them now to save as many lives as we can. I love that. And further... Other, furthermore, other information that I, that, I, that I found interesting interesting was that one in four women, as well as one in nine men, are physically violated to include stalking, to include yeah. the impact such as physical injury, fearfulness, post-traumatic stress, post-traumatic yes. stress disorder, and the contraction of STDs. 
what is your experience in these efforts? And if you can sum that up in about one to two minutes, and then we're going to um, continue with part two here in a second. But if you can give me your thoughts on that, because that also validates your experience. Sure. Um, um, I'm, what I'm saying is right now, ma'am, uh, the advice that I can, how can I put this? What, some women, some men come abusive because they have four or five women. So that leaves that woman there going through all kind of STDs, like you said. Because he's bringing them home to his wife. He's bringing them home to his main woman. Mm -hmm. That makes mm -hmm. STDs double and make STDs triple. And it's just not coming from young girls who just not getting out there, not knowing that a condom matters. It comes from abusive men that control their women and come home and make, and, and you got to make love to them. So with your question, I would say the best part is start getting some help. Join groups like domestic violence group. I know a few of them. Call in to 1-800 number. Facebook have at least seven to 10. I know good, good groups where people have told me, Nicole, you have helped me and I have gotten away. So I tell people all the time is the main thing is to start now by getting help. We can't tell you enough, but to take the first step is to get help, find you some programs that can help you and reach out to someone who's been through domestic violence. And maybe they can keep you, get you on your journey to move further. Because if you stay there, you're going to constantly get STDs. If you stay there, you're going to constantly get jumped on and get beat. If you stay there, it might be a chance that someone going to be at your funeral. I hate to say it that way. No, I love it. But if they stay there, it might be your last flowers that you receive. I, I love that because I think that the reason why people will listen to this this particular episode is because they need someone to be raw as well as authentic. So let me yeah. uh, let me ask you one more question really quick. What is the impact of domestic violence that 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 that, that, that a victim can experience or that it can have on a victim, Nicole? Doctor Nicole, the main impact that it has on victims is their mindset. Mm -hmm. Because when you Go back and keep replaying all of the um, vicious cycles that you went through and violent cycles and trauma cycles that you went through with this man. It can affect your mindset. And for years, it had my, high, my mindset in bondage. That, the last book that I, I did was Drowning in Deep Mind Sea. Because I felt like I was at the bottom of that ocean, sis. Mm. I felt like I didn't have anything no more because now he's winning over the kids. Because he giving them everything they need and looking like mom is the mean mom and not going going along with things. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, okay, if a man can beat you and then convince your children that you in the wrong, what do I have left? What do I have to fight for? Mm -hmm. But as I but I tell people all the time, keep fighting, keep fighting. Snatch back your snatch back your power of your mindset and your heart. Because if he gotta put his hands on you, if he gotta control you. Then it is not love that is abuse. And it's nothing about love that is abusive. And I want people to stop with that. If he touched me, that means he cared for me. Are you mad because he cared for me? Are you hating on our relationship? So what if we had a fight? That will one fight can turn into, like I said, an amazing great song sung at your funeral. Do not take it. Do not stay in abuse. So the main thing I would say was snatch your power back from him. And give it to God because your power comes from God, and that's the strength that is in you. Love yourself and respect yourself enough to know you are more than a conqueror. And if you believe that all things are possible, believe that God will bring you a, a husband that will love you, that will cherish you, understand you, and care for you and comfort you. I love that, sis. And real quickly, audience, I uh, to our audience, I want to interject. The, one eight, the National Domestic Violence Hotline for those who are in need, 1-800-799-7233. Again, that's 1-800-799-7233. We're getting ready to come to a close because uh, Nicole's story is so multifaceted. We're going to present you with a part two. In, in closing, uh, Nicole, I would like to ask you one last question, and then we will save the rest when, whenever we get ready to do the part two. And from you, you've shared a lot of tips today in your final thoughts. Um, name, you have, you've elected seven ways 
that women in violence can move forward. Would you mind sharing at least three to four of those ways? And then in part two, we will share the, the other three. Will that, will that be okay with you? Yes, that's fine, sis. No okay. problem. Thank you. So if we're going to look, Nicole has uh, derived seven ways in violence that can move you forward, but we're going to allow her because our time is running short today to uh, share four, three of her tips. And then in the next segment, she will share in her final thoughts, the last four of her tips. Okay. Dr. Nicole, go right ahead and share your tips. And these are her final th thoughts. In one okay. Um, to share three, I'm going to sum it up into, um, Number one is prayer. Mm -hmm. The way the, the, the one of the seven ways to get away from domestic violence is to pray. Ask God. Get on your knees. If you can't get on your knees because of a health issue or something, then pray. Wherever you at, just start praying. Pray in your house. Pray all over your house. Pray in your car. Pray when you're going to the grocery store, however, for God to get you out of that situation. Ask him to get you out of it. Read Psalms 35. For anybody that's digging a ditch for you, they can go mm. in a ditch. And read Psalm 91 where God will cover you. And he will trample, you will walk and trample over all your enemies. And let him send his angels down. And he's the only one can reward you with salvation. So I ask you to read Psalms 35 and Psalms 91. And pray, pray, pray. Ask God to take him away from you. Ask God to give you the love and understanding that you need. Father God, call out to them. And anybody that's on this call that is going through domestic violence and touch them from their head to their toe. And give them the sense of normalcy where they can live a, a, a normal, beautiful, and as other people say, the best lives that they have. And number two is go join some support groups. Like I know the National B Domestic Violence Hotline. I know sis gave you a call. I tell people, I mean, a number. I always tell people to call the 1-800-799-7233 okay. and get help today. Call. They really help. They will chat with you. They will help you stay safe. They have support, resources, and hope where you can go and stay in different domestic violence shelters. And number three, if you can't leave and you're scared to leave, find a way that you can call help with the police. Find a way that you can go and stay in the shelter or get into one of the groups that we discuss. Wings is one that I know are very is very powerful. And call them, stay there for a couple of months, and they will help you. Find you a place, pay for your place for for over, I think, like six months now. And then they'll even help you get furniture and everything you need. It might not be the beautiful house you had before. It might not be the beautiful car you had before. But what you will have is peace, love, and safety. And a blessing coming your way from moving forward. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, Dr. Nicole, can you please give us one a social media site and where people can contact you and get more information about your offerings and your programs? Yes, I can. Um, I would my favorite one where you can reach me on um, all my different links is www.ezcoy slash dreams. I love that. I am elated to have participated in this show today. I know that someone somewhere was touched by this wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much to the guest queen of the Savage Speaks Empowerment Roundtable, Dr. M. Nicole Peters, who is an international best-selling author, international motivational speaker, publisher, professional certified life coach, and a domestic violence advocate and a, and a rocking one to add about that. To learn more about Dr. Peters, please visit www.iamlisanobles.com slash podcast.html and as a bonus, please visit www.iamlisanobles.com slash resources.html where you can receive a free gift for being a part of the Savvy Speaks Podcast family. I love you. I truly do. And thank you for being a part of the show. And remember, remember my mantra. And as I always say, you know me, you are a unique combination of experiences. Flows <laughs> and purpose, strength, and destiny. Have a great week. And I'll see you right here next time on the Savvy Speak Empowerment Podcast. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles online at imlisanobles.com and on Facebook and Instagram at EWOFP. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review and we'll catch you next time on Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. Activate, motivate, inspire.